stage space. Uh, so thank you for being here. We're going to talk all about their uh, WMS application and that's both available on iOS, Android, and Windows. And V-Technologies is the leading shipping software developer for Sage. They've been doing this since 1989. And uh, Sage is definitely one of their core competencies and uh, definitely market leading shipping software provider. So here we're talking about the workflow. So today we're gonna talk about how an order comes into website pipeline and all that information, order information, uh, is transferred into Sage 100 sales order, entry and invoice, and how Avalara applies its sales tax automation to that order to make sure that uh, the customer is complying with um, all the rules, the sales tax rules. And then um, American Payment Solutions is gonna talk about level three processing and how to reduce the cost of credit card processing um, by using their level three process. And then we're gonna talk about picking and packing through ScanCo and the one software solution, how that uh, order moves over to be picked and packed through ScanCo and then how that order and all that, the details of the shipment are sent over to Starship and Starship will calculate the best um, shipment based on all the, the details of the order and the rules of which carrier to, to select based on the dimensional weight of the package and all the, the rules that will allow the best shipping cost for that particular shipment. And then Starship automatically updates accounts receivable so that the customers can go ahead and bill the customer and invoice the, the customer because the product is shipped. And then APS can process the credit card. Avalara can make sure any, um, any extra sales tax charges that came from the shipment is also applied. And then all that information is then reflected back into website pipeline where the customer can go through our self-service portal and view all the information and tracking numbers and all the relative data that they want to see to see when their item is going to be arriving. And so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Darcy here to get started with Website Pipeline. All right. Thanks, Adrian. You're welcome. There and you go, Darcy. Everyone, everyone seeing my screen? Widget Co.? We are. Awesome. Okay. Well, hey, guys. Thanks, everyone, for your time today. I could easily talk for hours about this stuff, or, um, or I could just talk really fast since I have limited time, which might happen anyways because I'm heavily caffeinated today. But there's a lot to cover. Um, I'm just going to give you a few points about Website Pipeline. Uh, we offer Sage integrated e-commerce solutions for public consumers, B2C, B2B, sales reps, and what other various other channels you might be selling through. And again, so I could go on for hours about the different applications of our products, but today we're just going to mostly focus on the order process in a B2B environment. Because today's consumer, whether they're buying for their own personal consumption or for their business's consumption or for resale or whatever the case may be, they expect a more modern experience than the typical phone, fax, and email methods of transacting and interacting with your customers that a lot of you guys might be doing. Um, so with the Sage Integrated Website Pipeline Customer Self-Service Portal, quite a mouthful I know, um, your customers and your sales reps can place and track their orders 24-7 along with a lot of other things, which I'm going to show you when we get in and take a look. So what we're looking at on our screen right now is our sample site. This is sort of the way that all of our websites are born, if you will. But, um, you know, they, um, we have a ton of flexibility with the layout and the design. So I wish I had the time to show you some customer examples of live customers because they all, you know, they can all look very different from each other. But this is just sort of the basic template, if you will. So what we're seeing here on this example is just a public facing catalog where pretty much anybody can go to the website and they can shop and they can place orders. Um, and so for many of our retail customers, for example, out there, this alone can really streamline your order process because the product information that you see here is pulled automatically from Sage and is refreshed automatically every 60 seconds with no human intervention. 
So if you go into Sage right now, and I'd love to show you this, but again, in the interest of time, you're just going to have to take my word for it. <laughs> but I'm happy to meet with any of you one-on-one -on -one later and show you all it in action. Um, but you um, come in, if you went into Sage and changed the description, for example, or changed the price, within 60 seconds, that would automatically be reflected on the website. And any orders that are placed on the website are going to automatically flow into Sage as well because it's a bi-directional integration. So, but a lot of our customers um, do sell to other businesses, and so in which case they're going to want a B2B portal. And so some of our customers may have this public-facing catalog where they let the public order, but they may want to add on a portal, which is what you get when you go to sign in, where their B2B customers can interact and transact with them on a little deeper level, which we'll see in a few minutes in customer self-service. Now, some of our customers want to sell to the public here. Others of our customers want to just show product information but not show pricing on this public site and have the pricing all behind the login. And still others of our customers just have a brochure site where they're displaying company information but not really showing much specifics about the products. That's all behind the login. So we have all different flavors of that. If you already have a website, that's okay. We can match your look and feel in the portal um, or we can design the whole thing for you from ground up. So I want to take a look real quick before I go into the portal. Let's look at this Han True Drawer file cabinet. And you'll see that the public price that you and I would pay if we were to go to Widget Co's website is $87. And now I'm going to sign into the portal. And as soon as I put in my username and password and sign in, the website now knows that this is me. And so it's going to act a little differently now. And I'm going to talk more about this window in a second. But while that's still fresh in your mind that that Han Drawer was $87, I'm going to go ahead and shop for that Han drawer. So you can see you still can have an option for a similar shopping experience where we can search products, we can group by categories and faceted searches and whatnot. But I'm just going to search for the product here. I've got that Han cabinet. And notice now, because the system knows it's me, my price is different. It's still showing me that list price of $87, but my price that I've negotiated is $37. And so what we do is regardless of which type of pricing configurations you may be using within Sage, we replicate that pricing logic from Sage on the website. Um, and it's not easy to do, but we've kind of mastered it over the years because 90% of our business is Sage 100. So we're very strong in that space. We're very, very familiar with Sage 100. Also, we can display inventory levels from Sage in this area if you like. A lot of our customers come to us and say, well, you know, honestly, we're just not that sure our inventory levels are accurate. we got to get that side of the house in order. So a lot of times they say they, they don't want to do that. But, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that some of my co-presenters are going to show you some ways to ensure the accuracy of your inventory levels. So just a side note um, that if you're, if you're looking to gain confidence in that inventory and display it on the website, there's solutions out there that can help you with that. So anyhow, we want as much of the information um, on the website as possible to come from Sage, to automate as much as possible of the, the integration. But, you know, Sage is a really great um, accounting software or ERP system, but it's definitely not a great e-commerce system, and it wasn't designed to do so. But that's where we come in. So every single one of our websites comes with an easy-to-use content management system that kind of gives you the power to add things to the website that you can't really put into Sage. So for example, if we wanted some product details downloadable here, or installation assembly instructions, or we wanted to put a product video down here, longer descriptions, all those type of things can be easily added by you um, in the content management system, you don't have to call us up every time you want to change. You really have a lot of control over that. Um, we allow you to do that. So let's just go ahead and take this one Han 2 drawer cabinet. I'm going to go ahead and add it to my cart. And I am going to come back to the cart experience in a moment. But first, I think I told you I'd go back to, uh, to the main screen that we see when we first log in and talk for a few minutes about this. So. We have found over the years that in a B2B environment, just from the response from our customers and, and pulling them and understanding what their customers need, that in a B2B environment, they're more interested in, you know, they don't need a bunch of, you know, flashy things and, and you know, a bunch of image all, all over their, the screen. They really, they want to kind of get in and, and do what they're looking to do and, and get their work done and then get out. And so what, we're, uh, what we've done here is just created these really big, easy to see, easy to use buttons. Um, incidentally, this is all um, 
mobile friendly. So as you can see, if I shrink down the screen, it goes ahead and readjusts it so that if someone's working off a tablet or phone or whatever it may be, it's not, they're still going to have a great user experience. Um, but I want to show you a couple other ways that, that B2B customers can come in here and shop. So one is through the price list. So they can just pretty much come in here and they can search for a product. So I'm going to, again, you know, type in that Han, and it's going to narrow down to the products that meet that criteria. So again, I could come in here and again, same order experience, add to cart from there. That's one way of shopping. Um, another way would be using favorites lists. So if your customers tend to have a, a set group of products that they order pretty regularly, this can really streamline their ordering process um, by setting up favorites lists. So what, they can have multiple lists um, and they can view them either, either as a gallery or as a list. And they can just come, simply come in here and enter the quantities of the items that they their favorite lists, add to cart, and they'll all be in the cart. So very simple ordering process there. And then one other way is bulk add to cart, so adding items by SKU. So I can just simply type in the SKU and add it. I can come in here, oh, it's already been added. So I can come in here and update the quantities and add to cart. So again, real easy streamlined process for ordering, you know, getting in, they're, they're not having to fax in an order. People still use fax machines. I'm so shocked, but there still are lots of fax machines out there being used. They don't have to email, etc. Now, there's some other buttons on here, but I'm going to reserve these until I come back. For now, I just want to go into my cart, and I want to go ahead and check out and show you that process. Um, so I've got two of these in here. I can modify that quantity. I can look at the item. I'll go ahead and proceed to check out. Now, the system knows who I am, so it's already pre-filled all of my contact information, but I can override it if I need to, but I'm just going to go ahead in the interest of time and accept the defaults there from the system. And then it's going to give me just an overview of my whole order here. And so I can modify information as needed here. It's probably a very similar shopping cart experience that many of you are used to in your personal lives, but in a B2B sense. Um, taxes, if we're using Avalara, then we can have sales taxes calculated automatically here in the shopping cart. And I'm not going to steal John's thunder, but you know, if you really want the most accurate sales rate calculations, Avalara is the way to go. And we integrate very easily and seamlessly with that in our shopping cart. In, in addition to that, you can accept payments via these methods from American Payment Solutions. If you're using their system, then you can actually accept payments right here. And I'm going to let Patty talk more about that shortly. But for this example, I'm just going to go ahead and invoice. You can allow and you can control this by customer, your customers to choose to be invoiced. So we'll go ahead and I'm going to call this Summit 4. And we can put in any comments. And I'm going to now place the order. The system is going to take me to a confirmation. And I'm going to receive an email also confirming my order. And within 60 seconds, this is going to show up in Sage in the form of a sales order. Um, before I hand it off to let you guys see what happens next, I just want to mention one other thing. We've done this all through the perspective of a customer, but we also offer these tools for your sales reps. So if you'd rather have your sales reps transacting and interacting on behalf of their customers, we have a whole other set of tools that allows them that power. They can do it from the field, from their mobile device, and they don't have to be digging in Sage and taking up licenses to do it. So that's another piece that a lot of our customers take advantage of. Um, so with that, the order's in Sage, and I'm going to let you guys see what happens next. Hey, everyone. This is John Litwa from Avalara. appreciate you guys hopping on today. So in, in the sense where we've seen Avalara calculate the sales tax real time while the customers walk through the website experience, and for everybody on this call, if you've purchased anything online in the past 10 years, there's a strong possibility that you have used Avalara. We currently have over 23,000 customers. We processed over 5 billion transactions last year. Uh, it's not a flashy in-your-face solution. It's just something that's working in the background to ensure some compliance within your business. Uh, for Sage users, Avalara has been an OEM product as Sage Sales Tax and Sage, Sage Certificates um, since 2007. So simply put, for you guys, uh, the solution works. It's vetted. Uh, it's not something new. Uh, nothing in the workflow will change for a Sage user when Avalara's process is, is in place. Uh, you can just see here, we've got Avatax set as the sales tax schedule. And basically, this is going to trigger Sage 
um, to make a call out to Avalara so that we can make a tax determination. And it's going to eliminate all of the processes centered around keeping up with sales tax rates, rules, boundaries, and product tax abilities for your business. Uh, in another scenario, you know, we offer address validation functionality. You know, why that is important is you are going to eliminate the uh, room for error and any fines or penalties that might be assessed with having bad addresses in the system. In addition to that, Avalara is pulling longitude and latitude coordinates from that address, and we're pinpointing that on a map, similar to what you would see with Google Maps. Uh, and all of our technology is based off of taxing jurisdictions. So if you've ever run into a scenario where you're not getting detailed enough uh, with your tax rates, that's where Avalara can step in and show that level of detail. You're seeing all of this happen within the website, within the shopping cart, but there's certainly going to be those scenarios where you have to make adjustments, credit memos, or someone calls in an order and you have to uh, manually enter that in. The same process that you go through today is going to occur, but since Avalara's Avatax is in place, you won't have to worry about making sure that specific sales tax schedule that's applied to the order is correct. You can see that sales tax amount has been applied uh, here. All of that information is pinging off of our system, so you'll have access to all of that transactional data here in our dashboard. And what you can see is with the expansion of that transactional detail, you can start to look and see, you know, where the jurisdictions fell, what rates were associated with it, and if that product was taxable or non-taxable, and how that was applied. If you need to send that to a customer, you can show them all that level of detail. For a majority of the customer, Sage users that I've worked with, the sales tax calculation can be a bit of a commodity. Uh, Avalara also offers an exemption certificate management tool that tracks, stores, and manages all of the certificates for your business. So gone are the days where you guys would have to collect paper certificates uh, and store them in a binder or a filing cabinet or in the event that your salespeople are responsible uh, for collecting that paperwork, making sure that it's filled out properly. CERT Capture basically acts as a digital repository where you can request all of these documents electronically and then your customer is going to walk through a digital certificate. They can sign with their mouse and then submit that document back to your uh, organization. So I want to make sure uh, if there's any interest, please let us know um, so that we can follow up with you and go a little bit more in detail about CERT Capture. It is a huge value add for especially people in that manufacturing and distribution vertical. Uh, that's all for me right now. I will hand it over to Patty so that she can speak to APS's role uh, in the process. Thank you, John, and, and thank you, Adrian. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I'd like to just briefly explain how website pipeline, as well as Avalara, are crucial to the fact that you can obtain the lowest rates possible coming from Visa and MasterCard. Um, as you can see on the screen, I'm showing what level one, level two, and level three requirements would be in order for you to get the lowest rates. Needless to say, the list for level three is immense. Avalara, as well as Website Pipeline, help us to obtain the fields that are required by Visa and MasterCard so that we can guarantee the lowest rate possible for you without you having to make any changes in your existing process. Uh, what I mean by that, many processors, first of all, do not offer level three. And if they do, they require that you actually type in and manually type in the, the fields that you see on the screen. I've circled several that I know. Avalara, as well as Website Pipeline, will provide. Uh, Website Pipeline will definitely automate your e-commerce and bring the orders into the system. They will allow you to see the inventory, as Darcy was showing. We take a lot of the inventory fields that Darcy showed, and we provide them to Visa and MasterCard. Your rate, due to those fields, can go down from 2.85 to 1.5 and even less if you are processing any transactions, business to business or business to government within the continental US. This is a very seamless integration. It's automated, completely automated, and I'm gonna show you the process within Sage 100 
once we uh, continue with our presentation. I don't want to take up too much time because I do want to let um, the other presenters during this presentation to show their share and then I will show you exactly how the level 3 processing is processed within Sage 100 towards the end and also show you the level of savings we are prepared to provide um, at your earliest convenience. With that, Matt, I was very quick and simple. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you. Okay, Patty, thank you. Um, and then were we supposed to go to Cody um, to show yeah, the pack? Sure. So I'll hand it over to Cody. Okay. Oh, go right ahead. I right. Perfect. <laughs> it's okay, Patty. All right. I definitely appreciate it. Um, what we want to kind of cover on the ScanCo side today is a little bit about the picking, packing, and being able to do all of this for mobile devices. So using a mobile device is definitely going to make the processes much quicker. You're going to have obviously some increased efficiencies and definitely a lot of increased accuracies. The device we're using today, as you'll see here, is just a standard iPod. We do have a scanner attached to that. So if your users are familiar with using iOS, if they're familiar with Android, they're going to be using those same devices out in the warehouse, so the learning curve will be much, much less. I'll go ahead and open our warehouse application here, and you'll see I'm already logged in. I'm at my home screen, and this gives you an idea of the transactions that we're actually automating. We have everything from shipping, picking, receiving, uh, to transfers, creating alias items, your physical count, manufacturing uh, and bill of materials and work order through job ops. And we also have real-time live dashboards as well as messaging capabilities. So now that your orders have been placed, they've come into Sage 100, it's time to get those out to the warehouse. There's a few ways to do that. If you're utilizing our dashboard, you can actually have a dashboard user sort the orders by whatever's important to you, maybe the ship via, certain customers might be on certain items, and they can actually assign those orders to the users out in the warehouse from the dashboard. You can still print pick tickets, we can add barcodes to those pick tickets, and once the users are ready to pick the orders, they'll just click on our picking icon here in the bottom left, and now we're going to choose the picking transaction. So we have quite a few different transactions depending on the needs in the warehouse, but for the most part, they're all very similar. The idea here is we're picking against the sales order, making sure we have the right items, the right quantities, and we're moving those to a staging location. This does work with or without multi-bin. So if you have uh, ACS multi-bin, you will have some advanced uh, capabilities such as wave batch, confirm picks, and a few more options. But even without multi-bin, just out of standard Sage, we still have order picking, which is a directed pick based on the bin location. We have wave picking, which combines orders. So if you want to pick three, four, five orders at once, it'll combine those and make sure you're picking them as you're walking through the warehouse just once. So for today, I'm going to go into order picking. It asks the warehouse I'm in, and it does know the default warehouse based on my profile. And now it's asking the location I'll be putting these items. So my staging bin which will be called shipping. And now I just need to tell it the order I'm picking. You can do a lookup, which will show all the orders in the system, or you can just simply scan and it'll give you a quick little overview. So this is telling me there's one line on the order. It's in my warehouse. It has not been picked yet. And I'm going to be able to pick that line complete with no insufficient quantity. So I hit okay. And it's guiding me through the warehouse. So it's telling me for this sales order, go to bin location A20M, scan this item for a quantity of five. So we get there and we grab an item and maybe we grab the wrong item. We grab one that's very similar. If I scan an item that's similar but not the right item, it does stop me. So it is making sure we're sending the right item to our customer. Now we scan the right item and it's telling me I need a quantity of five. So I can just tell it we are shipping five. And now that we're done picking, it knows that we're completed with the picking process and it's letting me know that everything's done and I can go ahead and submit. 
So we'll go ahead and click yes. And now that's been sent into Sage and essentially allocated to that order. So with multi-bin, it does a full allocation and bin transfer. If you do not have multi-bin capabilities, there will be a picking option in the sales order. So your sales team as well as customer service will be able to see exactly where that order is, the location it's sitting in, and have updates for the customers. So now that we have it in the picking location, we actually have to ship it out. So we can go into what's called ship picked, and that's essentially saying we trust everything that's been picked is going out, and we can create the shipping data entry from there. We can create invoice data entry through invoice picked. But for the proper warehouse control, we're going to go into shipping, and in here is our second validation. So we'll go ahead and enter our shipper ID. We'll tell it the actual sales order that we're now shipping. And you'll see here that I can tell it the package level detail. So we will start at box one. I'll scan my item. And let's say we put a quantity of three into box one. Now I'll scan the item that again. And what we're going to do here is you'll see that it's telling me that I've already shipped three of the five. Now I'm actually going to back up one step here and put this into our next box. Um, so to do that, let's pretend that I just, by mistake, uh, which obviously we just did, uh, put everything in box one. We do have review options on the handheld that will allow you not only to review what you've done, but will also allow you to make uh, certain changes. So you can see here uh, both transaction that I scanned, as well as the quantities and the box number that they went into. So I'll dig into that by tapping on one. And I can easily just tap on the box field and change the quantity or the uh, number. So let's say we want this to go into box number two. I can just hit yes, and now that's moved into box number two. So if something does happen on the floor, their hands aren't tied, they do have the ability to modify, they do have the ability to edit and make the order correct. All right, so once we are ready to go, we can go ahead and submit the order. So once we want to send the order through, we'll just hit the familiar send button out of iOS, and it's going to let us know that the data is going to be applied to the server, and I'll go ahead and click yes, it's okay to proceed. So that'll give me a confirmation that it went into Sage, and what has happened now in Sage is this has created the shipping data entry with our two boxes. It knows exactly what's in each box and gives the ability for Starship to go ahead and process that order. So at this point, we'll go ahead and pass it over to Matt, and he'll show you how that piece operates. And Cody, we do have a timely question. Um, we do have a request from Mike in the audience. He wondered if you could scan the item again to increment the quantity picked. Great question. And yes, you can. That's what's called, we call scan each. So instead of typing in the quantity, you can just scan the items multiple times to auto accumulate. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to hand that over to Matt really quick. Okay. All right. Thank you. And thanks, Cody. Um, so I will pick it up from where Cody left off. I'm going to uh, finish this order here. Some stuff out of my way. Okay. Make this full screen. So I'm just going to go into shipping data entry inside of Sage. And I am going to put in that order number 360. So the nice thing with the ScanCo pick pack solution is however I determine and scan my items and package them, um, it's going to make the entry inside shipping data entry automatically for me. Okay. And the nice thing with 
Starship, I can either, with our Starship link interface, I can come into Shipping Data Entry, I can go on my Shipping tab and click the Starship button, where what would happen is it would pass the shipping information and open up Starship, where my shipper can then ship and process. Uh, we also have a business object interface, and what I'm going to do is just close this, and I'll show you how you can use the business object interface. Nice thing with the business object interface, uh, my shipper can do all their shipping right from the Starship program. Okay, so I don't have to go into shipping data entry. I don't have to click the Starship button in there. Uh, what I can do is just come in here, and we actually have an enhancement uh, that goes along with the ScanCo solution um, because when you're using the ScanCo and it's making that entry inside of shipping data entry, what Sage is doing is automatically creating an invoice for you. And most customers, you know, the pick sheets are barcoded with the sales order number. So it doesn't have that invoice number on it. Uh, so again, we have an enhancement that will allow your shipper to either scan the barcode sales order number, they can manually type it in, or we even have a magnifying lookup glass. But what this enhancement will do, it takes that sales order number and it automatically relates it to the invoice number that Sage has already created inside of Sage. So I'm going to go on my shipment tab. So again, I can just scan that sales order number. Uh, Starship maps fields to and from Sage. The field mappings are one to many. So based off the ship via field, I can have Starship automatically select my carrier service billing type. Okay, so that's all going to be selected for my shipper. You know, they can most certainly make a change if they want to. You know, it's not written in stone, um, but it's nice. It's going to automatically select those. Okay. This order happens to be international, so the other nice thing with Starship, you can set up default international services for, um, you know, in this case, this was UPS Ground. So Starship automatically knows that, hey, you know, it's normally UPS Ground, but because it's international, automatically select UPS Standard to Canada. Okay, Sender, of course, that's the company that I have open inside of Starship, I'm sorry, inside of Sage, and recipient is just coming from the ship to on the order. And again, as I mentioned, the nice thing about the ScanCo solution is all the information is going to come in, how I already pre-packed it on the scanner, that's how Starship's going to receive it. Um, one thing I might want to do, maybe if I want to use Starship's custom packaging database, so inside Starship you can set up custom boxes, bags, bales, pallets, um, so maybe this one goes into a medium box. Nice thing with using custom boxes it's automatically going to populate the dimensions for my shipper. And I can include tear weights, maybe if this was a pallet. Okay. So really, I'll just go to the international tab here for international shipments. Um, Starship has its own database for all your international required information. So country and manufacturer, harmonized or scheduled B codes, I can look those up if I need to. Okay. NAFTA forms. All that information is stored inside Starship. Time of shipment, I can have my shipper rate shop. They can click the green dollar icon or they can go to the rate shop tab. Uh, this option is also available inside sales order entry. It actually is included with the purchase of Starship. There's no extra fees for it. Um, I can have a scenario here. I can shop all. But basically what Starship is doing is making a call out to all the carriers that you have modules with. So if I have UPS, FedEx, some LTL carriers, um, you know, maybe AAA Cooper. What it's going to do is actually make that call out directly to the carrier's web services, and it's going to return your negotiated contract rate that you have with the carrier. So it's a live rate. There's no more doing rate tables and maintaining them. Uh, the rate is always live. So I could see contract rate. If I wanted to, I can see list rate. And from sales order entry, this is all laid out. Um, so your customer service rep or sales reps could see a column with the contract charge, with the published list rate charge. And then we also have a, a column for applied rate. And applied rate for Starship is plus or minus any freight rules. So also inside Starship you can set up freight rules. You know, maybe you want to add a handling fee or, you know, just a, a flat fee if, the, if there's an oversized item. Again, you can just set up freight rules and have Starship automatically add or subtract um, a freight charge. 
And then also from here, we can do carrier rules. Uh, so you can set up Starship to automatically select the carrier based off your own rules. So hey, maybe automatically select the carrier that's the least expensive, and also maybe get the package there in the least amount of time. So uh, you know, some clients just have a ship via called Best Way, and they let Starship do the selection automatically. So again, with Scanco, everything's coming in. It's packaged. It's ready to go. Maybe I'm going to rate shop, and then when I'm ready, I'm just going to click the Ship and Process button. Okay. I just left an, uh, one field blank here so you can see. Uh, if there's any information missing, your shipper is going to get a notification. It's going to tell me exactly what it's missing. So here I'll just go to the Recipient tab, and I'll just add a phone number here. Okay. And then just ship and process. So as soon as my shipper ships and process, they are going to get all their shipping documents. Uh, normally they would just go right to the thermal printer or a laser printer. Um, I just have them previewing for the sake of the demo. So here's my shipping label. Starship can also print packaging lists as well. Uh, they can go to a thermal or a laser printer. Up to you. So box one, box two. Okay, because this is international, I'm going to get a commercial invoice. If this was an LTL shipment, I'd get a bill of lading form. You know, same thing. Order header, line item details automatically going to populate on the form. And then our forms can be customized. So maybe you want to include signature, date field. You know, kind of set up these forms so when they print out, they're ready to be used. Okay, and the NAFTA form, again, because this is international. And again, I customize this form, name, date kind of all these standard fields I can have already pre-populate. Okay. So again, ship and process. And now for my shipper, they're kind of in that rinse repeat stage. You know, they're going to select their next order and move on. And then I'll just quickly jump into invoice data entry here. So for the front office, here's the sales order 360 that we just shipped. Okay, on the header tab tracking, here's my tracking information automatically being populated into stage summary package tracking tables. Um, I can use Sage's hyperlink to track, and I can also, this is item to box detail, so I can see what's in each box. Okay. And then of course on the totals tab, we're writing back freight amounts. And then also with Starship, you can write, set up write back rules for the freight amount. So if there's some orders where you do not want freight to write back, you can most certainly tell Starship you know, when to do that or not to do that. All right. And then really quickly, I'm just going to show you, um, oops, that's Patty's. This is our e-notification program. So this is included with Starship. Let's log back in here really quick. Uh, so with e-notify, you can design your own custom templates. You know, get the shipping information out to your customer. I'll just quickly show you. I have a one. Nice thing, you put your company logo on there, build your brand awareness. Uh, but easily let your cups, customer know stage fields like PO number, sales order number, how it was shipped, of course where it's going to, item to box breakdown with hyperlink tracking numbers, estimated delivery dates coming from the carrier so it is accurate. And then on these you can have unlimited templates and then on each template assign uh, sending rules. So maybe if you wanted to do a coupon code, you can hyperlink the coupon code. But maybe you only wanted this to go to certain customers you can create a rule for that and you know this template would only go to those customers. And actually that's all I have so I'm going to hand it back to uh, Patty or I think hand it over to Patty I believe. Yes, I'm going to see if I have, thank you Matt, control of the mouse. If you could just take me back to stage so we can finalize the transaction or if, if you'd like you can go ahead and, and finalize it. I, I just have to talk about Sure. The uh, the process that's followed here, you would definitely once you have your your e-commerce site set up and the orders are pouring in, you have tax compliance without a worry using Avalara. You have the items being scanned, your your inventory and warehouse management with Scanco and the One Group, and and now you have shipping automation at your fingertips. So everything is automated. Think of the time savings here. Before I, I show, and you can go ahead, before I show the actual transaction, I do want to mention that you can pre-authorize a transaction. We've extended the length of time in which a pre-authorization can exist from anywhere between 7 and 30 days. We use 
they just guidelines as far as your security settings, any credit card information that you've already set up within customer maintenance, we also allow you to use it at the sales order level uh, during invoice data entry, shipping data entry, and also in accounts receivable cash receipts. So if I submit the card at this moment, I'm taking all of the information that has come from all of these other integrations, and now I'm simply accepting a payment it could be either a pre-authorization or a direct deposit. In this case, I have it set up as a payment pre-post authorization. And Matt, I'm not sure it's letting me click on it. If you wouldn't mind clicking on submit yeah. card. Oh, there we go. So you can see the APS window will appear with the default credit card information. It will reference an invoice or sales order number, depending on the area in which you're accepting the payment. Um, it will require a validation code, but you can also switch this requirement off and just bypass this field. It is a universal switch, so you have to be careful if you do decide to switch it. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and enter the validation code, and I'm going to click on the submit button. What's happening now is the transaction is actually going through our gateway. We are our own gateway and our own processor. And by the way, we also have uh, PCI compliance at no charge. I hope that I, I'm not sure that I was. Oh, it was close. okay. Uh, and the reason I'm mentioning the PCI compliance, I know that many processors will charge you for PCI compliance on a monthly and yearly basis. We have a team dedicated exclusively to making sure that you either become PCI compliant or remain PCI compliant, and that's at absolutely no charge to you. Now that I've submitted this transaction, it's just a matter of continuing my standard SAGE process where I update at the end of the day. But before we update, I just want to jump into our portal really quick and show you what the transaction will look like within the APS portal. And bear with me while I log in. One of the advantages of the portal is that you can actually process transactions outside of Sage. So if ever for any reason Sage is down, you can just go to the portal and process your transactions as usual. You would then have to key them in manually. Speaking of keying in manually, and before I show you the transaction, I'm getting to it. Um, if you are processing through Sage Payment Solutions, you're probably not taking advantage of level three processing. We do have a migration utility to help you bring all of your card information into our portal and just tokenize, it goes into our vault, um, it's completely PCI compliant. Um, and that is something that we're able to help with if you decide to make the switch, which I can tell you right off the bat that um, once we do evaluate your merchant statement, we can provide you with the, a tremendous amount of savings simply by processing through level three. Now notice how my transaction will indicate its pending capture. I pre-authorized it using an invoice. Once I update, what will happen, instead of seeing this pending transaction, you will see approved. The shipping fee will also be included. And you'll, you'll be given a transaction ID. This transaction ID is basically for you to be able to cross-reference between our portal and your Sage transaction. So you can see I'm referencing the invoice number. And if I go back into the Sage invoice data entry, you'll also be able to see the transaction ID that's coming from our portal. What I thought, what, um, Matt, if you wouldn't mind just finalizing the uh, update for me. Yep. I'll do that for you. Thank you. And what I'd like to just talk about is the fact that we do not charge for the credit card processing module. We provide assistance with installation, implementation, and training at no additional fee whatsoever. We offer American Express Ops Blue, which will guarantee your lowest rates with American Express, while at the same time, we guarantee our rates in writing to you. So you don't have to worry about the rates creeping up on you three months down the line. I do have to mention to everyone that we have a promotion through the end of September where if you provide us with your merchant statement, and depending on your volume, we can pay, help you pay up to 100% of any of the participating development partners in this webinar. Yes, you heard this correctly. We will help you pay for website pipeline, Avalara, Scanco, or Starship. Depending on the volume of your account, we can help you 
pay for more than one of these products. So please take advantage. There's really no risk. Thank you, Matt. There's You're no welcome. risk whatsoever. All we need from you is your most current merchant statement. If we are not able to beat or match your existing processor, we will pay you $500. That's how sure we are that we'll be able to beat or match any, any competitor out there. And not only that, our services speak for themselves. All we ask is that you give us a chance to demonstrate how our services can provide you with a, a much higher uh, area for savings. So now that Matt has completed the update within Sage 100, he has also updated our portal. If I go back to the report, what will happen now is you'll be able to see the transaction is complete. One of the things while I'm showing you the transaction, I'd like to also mention the fact that we offer 12-hour funding, not 24-hour funding. Many processors will say they have next day funding. What they really mean is 20 later. With us, you will receive the funds the next morning. So if you batch out by 9 p.m. Eastern time, the funds will be available at 8 a.m. the next morning. Eastern time, of course, and then you can calculate that on your time zone. You can see my transaction is now showing it's been approved. It will also still indicate the invoice number that we just approved and continue with the, with the transaction ID so you can cross-reference within Sage 100. This transaction ID will follow the transaction in Sage 100. So anywhere you're able to see this invoice, an invoice inquiry, customer maintenance, whatever the case may be, you'll be able to also find our transaction ID. Now again, don't want to be repetitive. Please keep in mind the promotion. It is a very strong promotion. I don't think it's ever happened before. It may not ever happen again. Take advantage. We will be more than happy to help you purchase any of the products that have been demonstrated in today's presentation. And with that, I think, uh, Matt, we have to hand it back over to John. Sure thing. Thanks, guys. Um, in addition to the sales tax calculations and exemption certificate management, Avalara also provides sales and use tax return services. So once approved uh, by our customers, Avalara will then file the returns handle all the notifications, and digitally archive all of the documents that have been filed on your behalf. We guarantee uh, that the returns will be filed in a timely fashion, and any of the incentives um, provided by a state or jurisdiction for timely filing are going to be passed back to you and your team. Uh, so if anyone is interested in learning more about the services, please uh, you know, make sure that you guys note that you'd like some follow-up um, so we can get some time on the calendar together. Uh, with that, I will pass it over to Darcy to wrap up the presentation. All right, very good. So you guys, we've been doing a lot. We've been accomplishing a lot in SAGE since that order first got entered on the website. And, and it's been moving, on, this order's been moving along very efficiently through the SAGE process with Avalara, with American Pima Solutions, with One, and with Starship. So we know that's all been going on sort of behind the scenes, but our customer doesn't really, they don't know what's going on with their order at this point. They've ordered it, they got a confirmation, but if you don't have a customer self-service portal, your customer really doesn't have any insight into what you've done or what the status of their order is. So we're more than just e-commerce, we're more than just shopping and shopping carts and buying. We, we do that whole customer self-service function. Um, we're a portal into all that order information in Sage. Your customers don't have to call you or wait on hold or wait to open if they want to find out about their order. They can come back into the portal at any time, 24-7. They can come in, for instance, and look at their orders. And we're going to see orders in here, not only orders that were placed on the website, but all orders in Sage for that customer. But we can tell the difference. The ones that came from the website are going to start with a W. So all orders are visible to your customer and through the portal. You can see all their orders. Um, and they can drill into the detail of those orders. They can also view shipments and track packages. So I can come into here, hey, I want to know when am I getting that? When's that arriving? Okay, well now I can see how they're shipping it. I can see what the ship date is. I can click into the detail here and I can see, um, I can come down here and I can actually see the shipments and even the tracking number, which originated with what Matt showed you guys with Starship. And, and I'll let Matt take a minute to kind of address that if you would, Matt. Sure. Thanks, Darcy. Um, yeah, so basically with Starship, when you click Ship and Process, we are grabbing the tracking num number electronically right from the carrier. So if I'm using UPS, 
uh, automatically grabbing it, being put into Starship, and then through the integration between Starship website pipeline, we're just passing that up. And as you can see here, um, website pipeline will put that on the portal. Great, thanks. And then going back here, so now your customer has that visibility into all of that information that's stored in Sage. They don't have to call you. They don't have to wait to get a response from you. That saves you on customer service and increases customer satisfaction. And then another last piece, and incidentally, we do offer this, um, this portion, the AR portal, the view and pay invoices portion, separately from the e-commerce should you just want that piece of the puzzle. Um, but what you can do in here is you can come in and view all of your invoices and the status, and you can actually go in and pay your invoices from here. So I can come in and make payments. I can select if I, I want to, if, if you want to allow your customer to pay less than the open balance, you can do that, and they can come through and enter payments to all the invoices they want to pay, and then we have a lot of open invoices on this account. Um, when we get to the bottom, we're going to have um, Patty's part come back in here, because I showed you before, with the shopping cart, if they want to use the APS to process the transaction right there in the shopping cart, they can, but if they're being invoiced, they can also come back in and view and pay that invoice and run that transaction through American Payment Solutions. So with that, I'm going to let Patty talk a little bit more to that. Thank you, Darcy. So absolutely, you'll be able to process the transaction right from your secure payment area in Website Pipeline. You know that all of this information is being moved into Sage 100 for you. Therefore, we will be able to take information that has already been secured through Website Pipeline. We take advantage, again, of Avalara, any shipping information. Um, and we're able to provide the level three data that's required for you to get that lower rate that, that I've been talking about throughout the presentation. You, you probably are not familiar with level three, and, and it's most of our interest to make sure that we at least show you what level three is about. I would like to ask everyone um, to allow us the opportunity to give you a credit card processing 101. We can show you exactly where the hard costs are coming from, directly from Visa and MasterCard. We can show you the American Express office blue. We can basically show you how to keep any processor on their toes, no matter who you decide to, to process through. Um, and basically that's it. And once again, I, I would like to repeat the fact that we would love to offer you the promotion where we can provide you with assistance in purchasing website pipeline, Avalara, Ganko, or Starship. Thank you, Darcy. And thank you, everybody. That's an excellent presentation. Darcy, Patty, John, Cody, Matt, for all of your participation here and showing how an integrated sales order processing Sage 100 solution looks like. I would like to share my screen uh, as I have contact information for each of you. And let's just make sure I got the right screen here. There you go. And I would like to launch some polls. And we do have several questions. So we do appreciate if you can stick around for the questions. We would appreciate everybody uh, hearing all the answers. And once again, uh, if you do have a question, you can go ahead and, and look on your webinar pane. And you'll see a question mark button. And you just click on that question mark button. It's right next to your name. And a dialog box will open up where you can key in your question and we will announce it for the presenters. So I'm going to go ahead and launch my first poll while I am announcing these questions. And are you interested in learning more about any of the following? So you can click multiple, just one, none. Uh, so uh, thank you for answering that question. And here we go. Is um, Scott has a question here. Thank you, Scott, for your question. And this is while uh, Darcy, I believe you were uh, presenting. So this question is for you. Is this based on the Sage eBusiness Manager or something completely different? Oh, great question. Thanks for asking that. We uh, we are totally unrelated to eBusiness Manager. In fact. We take people off of eBusiness Manager on a fairly regular basis because eBusiness Manager is sort of a great starting package, I think, for people who just kind of want to get their feet wet in e-commerce, but they pretty quickly find that it's very limited, um, it's inflexible, and frankly, with the infrastructure, security, and data integrity efforts that we put in, 
I mean, it, it, we kind of blow eBusiness Manager out of the water, to be honest with you. So if you are using eBusiness Manager, um, we'd love an opportunity to talk with you about the differences. And here's another question, I believe, for you, Darcy. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Thank you, Alex, for this question. Can the payment be changed based on customer? For example, COD would pay, be paid uh, with credit card? Um, so I think what maybe you're asking is um, can can you restrict the payment options by customer? Does that sound like the, what the question was? So some customers... Um, some customers yeah. might want to pay... Uh, cash on delivery where yeah. other customers want to pay by credit card so would you be able to yeah. change the payment field to reflect um, flexible yeah. options yes okay I think Alex please elaborate if we didn't answer your question but thank you for that and let's see it looks like so, it looks like maybe two people during your presentation Cody um, Lisa had a black screen. She couldn't see your iPhone, but I saw it, and it could have been browser-based. So, Cody, I just asked for you or a member of your staff to get in touch with Lisa, so just to make sure she could see your portion. Absolutely. And then, um, Mike, thank you for the, your question. I think we answered this one earlier, Cody. Can you scan the item again to increment the quantity picked? And then I just want to make sure I have all the questions answered here. And then um, it looks like we did have Cynthia. Sorry about your screen being black, too. It could be a browser issue because I saw it on my other computer. It was coming through fine. So if any of anyone else had any issues with not seeing Cody's portion, please let us know in just this question box. And then Cody will get in touch with you and make sure that you can see that uh, portion of the presentation. Um, and then Michael, uh, thank you, Michael, for your question. Can Starship provide a five freight quote to web customers in the checkout process? Um, we do have um, a interface that can be developed for on customers' websites. I do have a customer, couple of clients that do that. Um, that they use our rating API service on their websites. I hope that answers the question. And I do see that 40% of you out there have voted. If we could get that number up to 100%, that would be awesome. If you see we have a poll launched uh, on your screen, are you interested in learning more about any of the following? If you could just take a minute and just uh, select the applications that you'd like to receive a personal call from and uh, look at a, a little bit further. That would be great if we could get a few more of you to answer that. And then how does this work with Sage 100C, the cloud solution? Thank you, Scott, for that question. Um, Darcy, do you want to give that a shot? Sure. I mean, to us, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty interchangeable. There's really not any, any difference um, for, for our part. And then how about you, Patty? Same thing applies with us. There's really no difference. And then John? Same scenario. Cody, good with Sage 100C? Same here. We're definitely good on that one. Perfect. And Matt with Starship? Uh, unfortunately, not yet, but we are. It's in development. It should be out ready soon, the cloud interface. And it looks like Mike has another question for you, Darcy. How accommodating is website pipeline interface to customizations already made in Sage 100? Well, you know, so many have customizations, so that's just it's just part of the part of the deal. We absolutely um, we can work with you on your customizations. We can involve your partner or whoever has done the customizations and work closely with them. So certainly that is very common. And I'm happy to talk with you more specifically about your customizations in particular, but it's not something that we don't deal with every day. And I just wanted to remind everyone that we do have 48% of you who have voted out there in the audience for this poll up on the screen. And um, I just, you know, like to remind one more time, if you can, just take a moment to answer that poll. You can answer as many of these solutions as you'd like or just answer, uh, just don't answer. That's fine. 
And um, I do have one other poll, so I'm going to launch that. I'm going to close this one out and launch that poll and then share the results here. It looks like um, we've got quite a bit of interest in website pipeline and, and in everything. So let, let me hide that. And then I'm going to go ahead and launch one more poll. If everyone could answer this question, that would be great. Are you currently using any of the following solutions? So if you're using any of any part of any of these solutions, that'd be great to uh, get your feedback on that. And let me see if we have any other questions. And just reminding everybody out there, if you do have a question, there's a question mark button right next to your name on the webinar pane. And if you should have any questions, just go ahead and click on that question mark button. A dialog box will open up and then I'll read your question off uh, for the presenters, but it doesn't look like we have any more questions so far. So we'll wrap it up here because we are four minutes over and we really do appreciate you spending this hour with us. We know hard, time is definitely hard to come by and we appreciate you spending it with us. I'm going to go ahead and uh, close out this poll. It looks like 50% uh, of you have voted, so I'm going to go ahead and close out this poll. I'm going to share the results. And then I'm going to hide that really quick so that when I can flash the contact information one more time. And there you go. So uh, here's all the contact information. And I will be sending a follow-up email with everybody's contact information and the recording of this webinar. And you can always visit ERPVAR's YouTube channel for any of our previous recordings. There are a lot of them are SAGE 100 related. related. Um, so if you wanted to visit our YouTube channel, it's youtube.com forward slash ERPVAR. And there's all kinds of different solutions that we've um, had uh, presentations in regard to cycle counting, sales tax automation, credit card processing, shipping, uh, so warehouse management, um, lots of different types of webinars in those regards, like with multi-bin, with one software solution. We focused on that in the past. So uh, please visit youtube.com forward slash ERPVAR uh, if you'd like to take a look at any of those presentations. And again, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you, presenters. You did an excellent job. We really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Have a great afternoon, everyone. All right, thank everybody. You. Take care. Bye-bye.